decent fish. Yeah. Oh, what is that? There's a good one. It ain't a bad fish at all. And that is a good red fish. See you, dude. What is going on, everyone? I feel like it's been a while since I've gone out and only thrown lures. It's either been cut bait or live bait, shrimp, uh, greenbacks or like a combination with some lures in there. For today's video, I really wanted to go out and just throw some lures. I started today throwing an X wrap, which if you guys remember a couple months ago, I posted a video where I did really well throwing the X wrap, tied my PB in short slam ever. I started the day like, oh, let me try that again, see if I can kind of recreate that. And I'm not gonna lie, I struggled while throwing that. I looked into my, my little tackle box and I found these lures right here. This is a Salt Strong Slam Shady in the FRED color. So FRED stands for Fooling Redfish Every Day. All this is is the same profile, same bait as a Slam Shady, but in a pink color instead of the white color. And it's supposed to imitate more of like a shrimp. Salt Strong is giving away a free pack of FRED lures to anyone that wants one. All you have to do is use the link down in the description. I'll also go ahead and pin it at the top of the comments and they will go ahead and send you a free pack of these pink scented paddle tails. All you have to do is pay for shipping. And without talking too much more, uh, let's get right into today's video. All right, I'm gonna try this Salt Strong Fred lure and we'll just bounce this around this little uh, sandbar island we got right in front of us. See if we can pick up anything. I've gotten some big trout off this island and I've also gotten some uh, good redfish and snook. It's just a good little island especially when there's mold around. It seems like the mold are kind of sticking around in this deeper pocket over here. Let me get a cast in there, see what happens. Right where the mold keep popping. Let's sink down to the bottom. Should be about three, four feet over there. Just kind of pop it up off the bottom. Oh. That's a fish. That's a decent fish. Yeah. Oh, what is that? Is that a monster trout or is that a snook? I could not tell. I don't know what I have on right now. Or is that a triple tail? Did it not look like a triple tail? What is this? Oh, it's a snook. For some reason, when it jumped, it looked like a triple tail. Okay, first fish on the on the Fred. Probably like a mid 20 inch snook right here. We got 25 pound leader on there. It looks like I got them hooked kind of perfectly. No, it's kind of rubbing, I can feel it. So just cast it over where those mullet were hanging out. Got a little snook. My first fish on the, the Fred. There we go. Not a bad snook, actually. When he jumped, he looked a lot like taller than a snook. I thought it was a triple tail. Get a quick measurement on this guy. Right there. Oh, dude, that's a 28 inch snook right there. 28 inch snook on the Fred lure by Salt Strong. If you guys want to pick some up, I'll have a link down in the description down below. Awesome. That's my first fish. And honestly, I think that was like four or five casts in. So that's a good start with this lure. Here we go. Made a cast over by the mullet and this guy was just hanging out underneath him. See you, dude. Now with snook, you always want to make sure you check your leader after, yeah, look how frayed this section of leader right here is. Holy crap, that 25 was hanging on for dear life. So let me cut that and retie. When I'm using a, a jig head, I like tying a loop knot. It's just a little overhand knot. Put it back through the eye of the hook like that. Put your tag in through the loop of your overhand knot and tie another overhand knot. Put your tag in around the line and shut down just like that let's check out the damage on this lure really not too bad at all let me just get it rehooked 
should be able to cast the same lure back out. There we go, just like that. See a small school of greenbacks over there. Let's see if there's any fish underneath them. Kind of coming to the boat. The greenbacks this time of year are really small. There we go, that's a trout. So in a matter of five minutes on this lure in one spot, I've gotten snook, now a little trout. Now if I could just get the, the redfish like this lure is made to catch, I have a slam here pretty quickly. My hands are wet from the, the snook still. So go ahead, make sure your hands are always wet when you're handling trout. Cute little guy right there. See you, dude. I'm sure we could get much bigger than that around here. Lure's still good to go. Oh, starting to rain a little bit. Yeah, it's coming. I'm gonna do one more cast and I'm gonna have to get out of here. So the camera gear doesn't get wet. Okay, okay, it's starting to rain. Okay. All right, new spot. Storms are starting to build around, so let's give it a little bit longer throwing this fret around, see if I can get a slam quickly. Came back to the spot where I got the snook and trout. The rain's moved on. Keeping an eye on these other storms that seem like they're forming, but come back to where I had some success. See if we can get more, more fish, maybe a redfish to get the slam on this lure. There's a good one. That's a good fish. I found some fish stacked up over here. First cast back over here. Is this another snook? It feels heavy. What is this? Why does it feel so heavy? Okay. Maybe because it ain't a bad fish. It ain't a bad fish at all. I'm guessing another snook. Haven't seen him yet. Come on over here. Is that a red? That is a red. My first cast back over here. I get a nice redfish. That is a, a slam on this lure in one spot. I got the snook and the trout pretty quickly over here in like five minutes, the rain started happening. And that is a good redfish. On the Fred, the fooling redfish every day. Come on over here, dude. This is a solid red. I didn't get a measurement on that trout, but the the snook was uh, 28. I'll get a measurement on this guy. Hopefully we can get a bigger trout. This guy's not giving up. Come on over. They're liking that pink, that pink color. Dude, that's sick. Come on over here. I've caught three fish today, and the three fish I have caught have given me a slam. That's sick. He's got a lot of spots on him too. This is a cool looking fish. Get him in the boat. That is a solid redfish right there. Lay him down. I'm going 24, 25. That is sick. He's drumming. That lure perfectly hanging out of his mouth like that. Get that jig head out of you. That is a solid redfish. He's got 
five spots on that side and four on that one. That's a nine spotter. That is sick. Nose right there. He is 26 and a half inches. Beautiful redfish. See you, dude. First cast back over at this spot and he hammered it. The lure seems to be fine. It was just kind of like hanging out of his mouth. That's perfect. Didn't frame me up at all. I just checked. Let's see if we can get some more fish. He put up a really good fight too. I got that fish on my Pen Battle 3, 2500 with 10 pound braid. On my Bull Bay Banshee 7.4 medium action rod. And I'm uh, using that, uh, that Fred lure by Salt Strong. It's like a pink slam shady. And it's working really good. I think I got like a quarter ounce jig head on there. I just can't believe that like three fish today total and got me a slam like usually it's like you're catching like a lot of one of them like you're catching a lot of red fish and then you're like all right i need a snook and a trout no this lure has gotten me the slam if i didn't leave this spot because of the rain i was just concerned about the camera gear getting wet if i didn't leave here who knows how quickly i could have got the slam because it was about 45 minutes ago when i left and just decided to come back here and it already paid off. I'm honestly shocked at how well this lure is working today. I had thrown around a, uh, an X-Wrap, which I haven't thrown in a while. And the last time I did, I had an absolutely killer day. Made a video about that a couple months ago. So I had high hopes for that. I was throwing that around this morning uh, for a while, for a couple hours. When I came to this island at first, I was throwing the X-Wrap at first. And I still wasn't getting anything. So I tied on this lure, the fret and got that snook on my fourth or fifth cast and then got a trout right after and now I got my slam. I think one of the key things about throwing this lure and it's kind of success today versus the X-Wrap is the X-Wrap is a very quick moving, like erratic bait. It's a twitch bait. It's like a mirrodine, that kind of erratic pattern right on the surface. And I, I literally just think the water is like a little too hot for the fish to be that committed to a bait in the middle of the afternoon like this. It's about 1.45 in the afternoon. So I think if you can find a way to kind of slow down your presentations, use a bait that you can slowly kind of bounce out of the grass and bring it right in front of the fish's face. And it's not as erratic, not as much commotion going on. I think that's a way to kind of maximize your opportunities in these hot summer days that we have here in August. Oh, there's a fish. It feels like a, oh, it's a little trout. Little tiny guy, probably smaller than the other one. I hooked that so hard into you, bud. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's about the same size as the other one. Never gonna touch this guy. Just gonna try and get a quick release on him. If you can avoid touching trout, it's best. Keep their slime on. Oh, see you, dude. Sorry about that. If you can avoid touching them, that's the best thing you can do for them. If you're not keeping them, obviously, if you're keeping them, then a jerk off, but. I want to protect their slime coat. One of the main reasons that you'll find a lot of uh, sucking redfish and trout hanging out with schools of mullet. One, obviously, because they're eating the, the finger mullet, the smaller mullet. Um, but another thing is when the bigger mullet are kind of going through the grass, kind of picking out the algae or whatever they're eating, then a lot of times they spook up shrimp out of the grass. The shrimp don't know it's a mullet and don't know that the mullet's not going to try and eat them so they start trying to pop away from them and that's when the redfish get an easy meal without having to really like hunt after these shrimp because they're all getting scared out of the grass by the mullet that's why it was really productive for me but i think it's time for us to move on it's been a little bit since i got bit again all right one last spot I want to see if we can get some more decent fish. I didn't want to just go and try and get some trout, which I know this would slay some trout, but I want to see if I can get some more snook and reds on them. So tide is down pretty far now. Uh, low tide's in about an hour. So I'm coming over here to this uh, deeper pocket right in between these two little islands right here. Usually it holds some snook, maybe some red fish, sometimes some trout in this deeper pocket, kind of funnels the fish in there. So as you can hear, it's rumbling in the distance so we don't have too much longer but let's see if we can make it worth it we'll work it like a more like a swim bait kind of reeling it fast because it is pretty shallow over here
There we go. That's a fish. There we go. What is this? A little trout? This is a little micro snook. Little micro snook. That's adorable. Not the size that I came here for. Cute little micro snook right there. Let's get a release on him. See you, dude. Let's get a bigger one. There's a fish. Come on. Oh, it's another micro. Another little micro. Boat's about to pull around to the mangroves. Oh, he popped off right there. Perfect. 